I cannot believe some of the players I'm about to say in this video need to be sold. But the football world has changed. Selling players has never been more important under the current Premier League rules. And in this video, we're going to be getting rid of some of the best players that I've enjoyed the most from every Premier League team to allow clubs to spend big this summer or to at least spend. Now this team has done brilliantly in the transfer market over the past few seasons, but to do this, they've had to spend big on some players, meaning that recouping some money is important to allow them to continue to close the gap on Manchester City. And it's getting even smaller, isn't it? The best way to do this seems to be by selling academy graduates at the moment as it goes down as pure profit, of course. So this is why for Arsenal, We've gone for Emil Smith-Rowe. His contract is up in 2026, so now is a great time to sell him. Maybe get 25 million for him, maybe a touch more, probably not. But you can use that money and go and get someone that you believe offers that little bit more threat. The fact that he's not been a key figure this year, I think speaks volumes. When it comes to purchasing players, this team could really do with a striker this summer, but they find themselves in a tricky situation that means that they need to get rid of one of the current strikers just to justify it. Now, both of the main strikers are 31 and 33. So again, I think you want to lose one of those guys and bring in someone that allows you to bring the squad aids down a bit because I think that's important. So with West Ham, it's between Danny Ings and Mikel Antonio. Despite Antonio being two years older, I'm going to go with Danny Ings because you know, he's only started three Premier League matches last season, didn't offer that much at all. And I think it'd be in his interest to move as well. He's not getting any younger and he needs to play games and be the main man somewhere. If you would like to come to QPR for low wages, we are available. But I can't believe I'm even about to say the name I'm about to say because I don't want to say it. This next team needs to properly clear out. They're a team who find themselves under financial, real severe financial scrutiny at the moment. And that's that's been factored into the player that we've selected. They've signed him for only 3 million and could potentially sell him for 20 plus in my opinion, because I think he's that talented. So we've gone for Callum Hudson-Odoi. I can't believe I'm saying it. Sorry, I'm really sorry Forest fans. And I know you're not gonna like it, but as Mario's always said, it's part of the game. The game it? Now this one was actually harder than I thought, because when you look around their squad, there's not many clear options to get rid of. And I'm gonna put forward somebody who only signed last year, because I think it gives them that extra opportunity to make extra cash when you're factoring that he was signed on a free and I think it allows for a bit more profit for Fulham. So despite playing well on the last day of the season we're putting forward Adama Traore and those biceps and I think he could generate around 10 million at least for Fulham all of which would be profit. Next up Tottenham who I think have probably as strong a financial position as any team in the Premier League right now and so incomings will occur but Postacoglu has made it abundantly clear that there will be big changes so players will of course leave as well. So in Tottenham's case you then look around the squad for areas that need to strengthen and areas that you need to make space for new arrivals. So this player that we've gone for he has never really worked out for him at Spurs and moving him on for a new forward I think makes so much sense. So Brian Hill is the player that we're going to go for. Adios Brian. Right guys, summer is here. You're going to be on your holidays. There's also going to be so much great sport in the next few months. You've got the Copa America. You've got the Euros, of course. You've got the Olympics. And therefore, you need to get yourself a Surfshark VPN. What is a Surfshark VPN? I hear you screaming at the top of your lungs. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network that keeps your online data safe by encrypting all of the data between the device and the internet. So if you're ever out and about and you're using public Wi-Fi, it's crucial at keeping those pesky cyber criminals at bay. With the Surfshark VPN, you can change your real location to any location around the world. Over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries. And this means that you can access, first of all, all sorts of content. Let's forget sport for a second. You've got the Netflix libraries of hundreds of countries. Japan, USA, Australia, etc. But also, if you're on holiday and you want to be able to watch the BBC coverage of the Euros, for example, then you can do that. Just simply change your IP address back to the UK and tuck in. Masking your IP address is essential in becoming private online. A VPN ensures your city, country and download history isn't linked to your identity. And Surfshark's clean web features, blocks ads, phishing attempts, tracking and malware, allowing you to surf the web safely. And the final thing that sets Surfshark apart and provides even more value is that you can use your Surfshark VPN on unlimited devices. So again, if you're going on holiday this summer, you want to put it on your iPad and your phone, whatever it may be, it's an absolute must. So head straight to the link in the description and use the promo code ALLCOT to get yourself four months for free using my code ALLCOT. That's a -L -L -C -O -T -T. T. You should know that by now. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk. So why not give it a go, especially over the summer months?
Okay, this is a club that really doesn't need to sell because they've sold so many players recently and are clearly in a green financial position. That's the thing. But you can always find someone to get rid of. <laughs> Trust me, especially when you're making a video. And one player in particular that I think needs to move on to allow for others to possibly come in and to have that added bit of bite in midfield, I think Brighton could do with letting go of Mo Dahoud. The reason I say this is because despite only being signed last season, he has struggled early on in the season. He was then loaned out to Stuttgart where he played okay. So all that means that I think they could potentially get a decent amount of money for him and kind of cut their losses a little bit, especially from the Bundesliga or specifically Stuttgart. It's all about progress for this next team and it's about those incremental gains that allow them to build a really high quality, young, exciting and deep squad. And to do that, it's all about letting players leave and then replacing them with long-term options. And there have been rumours of Bruno Guimaraes or Isak going as well. But I think there's one player that people may be missing. Now, I know he's a little bit older, but Callum Wilson is a player that I think they should sell in exchange for a younger player to take his place and allow yourselves to maybe hold on to Isak. He also would be very easy to move on and would have a lot of suitors in the Premier League because his goal record is astonishing. I wouldn't be surprised if actually competitors Aston Villa when it comes to those Champions League places wanted a striker like Callum Wilson because that backup for Ollie Watkins that is an elite backup and for Wilson he gets to play Champions League football. Aside from that I think any mid-table team would jump at the chance at signing Wilson. Now this next team have got a few assets that they could sell which would make them a hell of a lot of money this summer but I don't think that they need to sell both of them. So in Everton's case it's either Branthwaite or Onana. Let me know in the comments down below who you think they should keep a hold of. Onana is by far the most sensible one in my opinion, as whilst he's been good for Everton, he's not been as crucial as Branthwaite. Onana will drum up a lot of interest you'd expect and Everton would still have quite a few decent midfielders in the team that have played well this season whilst Onana hasn't been involved. Right, Man United. Now we could have gone centre back but with all the problems that have occurred there, I think well, let's just leave that alone. Let's look elsewhere, shall we? Instead, we've gone for a player that Manchester United really don't need and I can't think of a single reason to keep him. And I know he costs 90 mil, but at this point, I'll just get rid of Anthony because he offers nothing, if I'm honest. He takes a starting spot away from someone like Diallo, who, when he has stepped in, has looked miles better and miles more exciting, miles more positive and miles more flexible in terms of his ability to take on a man and he already looks better. So Man United can't afford to have passengers anymore. Take what you can, cut your losses and move on. And don't expect to get 90. I think I would say that as well. It's sad that this next team needs to stay in order to continue to progress, but that's the reality these days. There are some candidates that Aston Villa could sell. Of course, you've got Diego Carlos, Matty Cash, but unfortunately, I think to be able to go big in the transfer window, you're going to have to sell a big, a big name. And there's two big options for me. One is Douglas Luiz, one is Jacob Ramsey. For me, Jacob Ramsey, it's about if you are going to have to sell one of your own guys who's got a very high ceiling and he's only 22, I don't think this is the summer to do it because I think his stock is low and his stock can be so much higher. One solid season in the Premier League, which he's utterly capable of, especially under Unai Emery. And his, you know, the amount that you can get from him doesn't double, but it really, really goes up. So I would say take the money of Douglas Luiz. You've got Ross Barkley are likely to come in. Tillemans is there and available as well. You've got a lot of midfielders in there. And I know Douglas Luiz is fantastic, but I believe that he will be eyeing a move away. I think he's got those stars in his eyes and I think he would want a Real Madrid or one of those monster clubs to come and take it. And I think at 26, with the season he's had, you can make a lot of money off him and get away with it, let's say. Okay, it's a tricky one with this one because they've just been promoted and purchasing players will be more important than selling players, you'd imagine. But they also need to make sure that their squad is ready for the Premier League and getting rid of players who maybe aren't up to it is a good place to start. So for Leicester, I think that simply they have to be cutthroat and Pats and Dakar, I think, is going to be the casualty of this. I really don't think he suits the way that Maresca wants to play and I'm not really sure that he's good enough from a finishing point of view to consistently score goals in the Premier League. But Leicester fans, you'll know much better than I do, so let me know in the comments down below if you disagree with that one, if you think I've got it wrong. Speaking of teams that don't get it wrong very often, Brentford, they need to continue with the project and with that there are some body blows and Brentford fans will be fully aware of this over the years they have lost great strikers and it's going to happen again Ivan Tony, of course is the right pick and the right guy to move on Malpai's gone in the past Watkins has gone in the past 
so many players, so many strikers have been sold for good money and you've gone and found another one. So now it's time again, Ivan Tony, go and get as much bank as possible and spend it wisely. Right, we've got a team with a new manager for the upcoming season, so it's hard to predict who he will want to keep and who will be unwanted, which made this choice quite difficult, actually. But someone, I think, that could be sold and would make a really good chunk of profit, pure profit, and wouldn't affect the outfield team is Kelleher at Liverpool. I don't think Liverpool want to get rid of him, but in terms of selling a player and making good money, pure profit as well, for someone who isn't a starter in a position where you generally play the same person every single game, every single week, I think Kelleher is the right option. And on a personal note for him as well, he's proven that he's a quality goalkeeper. He needs to be the number one somewhere. And of course, Alisson is not going anywhere, is he? Okay, this player wasn't actually at the club this year. He was out on loan, but after yet another unsuccessful loan, I think Wolves have just got to take the hit on him and move him on, especially, I mean, this is even if it's possible, with the fact that he's on 80,000 a week, according to Capology. Wolves also need to sell this summer to spend and selling Fabio Silva, in my opinion, will be a great place to start. I don't think this next club is going to want to sell anyone based on the season that they've just had. And there will obviously be a sentimental aspect to any departure. But to make sure that they thrive in the Premier League, they will have to have a few outgoings to strengthen the squad to the point where Ipswich can stay in the league. One player who I think may fall down the pecking order if signings are made, and I expect signings to be made, is Marcus Harness. So for that reason, I think he could be a player that Ipswich look to move on. The difficult thing for Ipswich is you're not going to make too much money because you've got a squad that has done so well that it isn't proven in the Premier League, obviously. So it's championship teams that they'll have to be looking at when it comes to selling players like Harness. Well, let's be honest, Manchester City, they don't need to really sell anyone. Their squad is pretty much flawless. But one player I think that they may just shake hands and move him on is Sergio Gomez because he simply doesn't get the minutes. And just because he's been in that Manchester City bubble, I think you can probably sneak 50 million for him after signing him for 30 million, which I guess isn't the worst business. But of course, the inevitable rumours about Bernardo Silva leaving will occur. Will he stay there another season? He generally does, so expect that to happen again. Now, again, another team that is one of those teams that is currently working towards a project, and therefore there will be casualties along the way because of this. But there is one player that currently doesn't look to be a part of the first team plans. He will no doubt have a lot of suitors in the championship, and that player is key for more. After what he did with Ipswich after signing in January, he generate Bournemouth some cash whilst also allowing them to add to their striking options or to make Unal's loan a permanent one. There will be so many clubs vying for this team's best players, but obviously they don't want to sell their star players. But there is one player that probably needs to be moved on this summer due to not signing a new contract. Often we're talking about Eze, Elise, and now Mateta gathering a little bit of interest. But actually, it's Mark Gay that they need to move on because he currently only has two years left on his deal. And right now is the best time to sell. Right, where do you start with this team? So many players could leave this summer and probably for the better considering the size of their squad. There are two options for me when it comes to Chelsea and it all falls under the pure profit umbrella of selling your academy graduates, which I know feels weird, but this, these are the rules. This is the system that seems to be in place. And the first is Conor Gallagher, who I don't think they should sell. But on the other hand, he only has one year left on his deal, which may force their hand a bit. The other option is Trevor Chalabar, who would no doubt bring an in interest and again would be sold for pure profit. But because of the situation that Chelsea have got themselves into, it will probably have to be Conor Gallagher because of his contract situation. So we've told you who every Premier League club should sell. What about the buys? What about the transfers in? Well, click on this video and you can find out who we put forward for each Premier League club.